Joining us now at Post 9, early Facebook investor and advisor, also Elevation Partners co-founder Roger McNamee. Thanks for joining us. Kelly, good to be here. I mean, you have some pretty pointed words. You say these self-inflicted wounds are killing Facebook. They don't understand how much trouble they're in. I, I think there's a huge trust issue with the users of Facebook that is completely legitimate. I mean, let's face it. In 2010, they created a tool that allowed advertisers to harvest friends list without the permission of the friends. The Federal Trade Commission comes in and says, no, no, no. They sign a consent decree where they promise to have only informed consent and to protect the users from inappropriate use. They leave the tool in the market until 2014. So for three more years, tens of thousands of companies, and I have no idea how many apps, were still harvesting this. I mean, we have no idea how many people have lost their privacy over this. Mm -hmm. And for Mark to sit there and say, as he did, you know, well, we'll study it and we'll fix it and we'll create some tool to find out. That is not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to send a personal email. You're supposed to put this at the top of everyone's feed until they've read it and checked off a box that says, hey, you were manipulated in the 2016 election or your stuff was taken by Cambridge Analytica. And this is what it means. And this is what you can do about it because they can never get that data back. It's gone. I, I guess they knew about the Cambridge Analytica issue initially in 2015 and, of course, only talked about it in the last couple of days. It feels like they've been reactive to when things have been wrong rather than proactive. Are there other issues out there that they're also still failing to be proactive on well, potentially? I think you have to assume there are. And on the Cambridge Analytica, let's remember a really important point. So when they cite them in 2015, it was only because The Guardian told them. And then six months later, they have their own employees working inside the Trump campaign alongside all the Cambridge Analytica people. They had to know. I mean, Cambridge Analytica was the most promotional company in history. Mm -hmm. They're out there telling everybody they're working on the Trump campaign. If, if there has even been wrongdoing here, whose wrongdoing is it, as far as you can tell? Well, I mean, clearly there are issues for Facebook relative to the consent decree. I, I Cambridge Analytica, as far as I can tell, has broken every rule on the book. And, you know, I don't know whether there are going to be Federal Election Commission's issues there. There may be fraud issues there. You know, there's a Is lot. That because so Cambridge Analytica will say, you know, we had this data was brought to us by a third party. Well, you know, we, we had access a, to it and then we didn't use it. And I'm not sure I buy their story. It looks more like they set up the researcher. Right. If you look at the timeline, if you look at all that, it would not be crazy to assume mm -hmm. that they sent the researcher in to do that whole thing under false pretenses. But from Facebook's point of view, they were under a consent decree. They should have been doing serious diligence on that researcher. They mm -hmm. should have been doing research immediately afterwards to see how the stuff was being used. I mean, they, they bear some real responsibility for that. Roger, even if uh, Facebook hasn't broken any laws or broken even any of its own rules itself, have they broken a sort of mor moral trust that they have with their consumers? Well, well I, I, they have with me. I mean, I spent three months starting in October 2016 trying to say, guys, I think we have a systemic problem here and I think that the damage you know before the election I didn't realize it was going to be on democracy but afterwards I said you're killing democracy and by the way if you don't fix this you're going to lose the trust of your users and you're going to kill your business do you own shares of Facebook still? I still do I've trimmed a bunch of it because especially this week because it just I, I don't think they get it and I'm sitting there you know I'm trying to say to investors, I don't know what's going to happen here. This is a great business. I love the product still, but I don't like what the advertising business model creates in terms of incentives. You said you're going to, they're going to lose the trust of the consumers. I mean, how quickly might that manifest? Well, in the next quarterly earnings, are we going to see average monthly users well, drop significantly? I, I don't know exactly. I mean, they have two billion users, most of whom are outside the U.S. In North America, usage declined in the fourth quarter for the first time in history. That's right. I suspect it'll be down again this quarter. And because of this or either way? Well, I, I don't you think the news that's been building has been increased? I mean, to me, I just say this as a stock analyst. The distrust has been building for months. And if it started last year, it had to have gotten worse this entire quarter. And then I would think you may have see a change in actual user count. But I would suspect that would be going forward. And here we are at the tail end of March. So. The news of this isn't going to affect the usage that much in the March quarter, but it might affect it a lot in the June it's quarter. It's interesting the New York Post today has a couple of page spread on 
the delete Facebook and whether you should do it and people defending it and people who are who you know are and aren't doing it. I was just going to ask you though, as all of this is swirling about, what you think the right response should be by management and by the board right now, and whether this is going to come back to the issue about Mark Zuckerberg having so much control over this company. So Kelly, I think the hard part about this is the advice I gave them in 2016, which I've given them ever since, is to look at what Johnson and Johnson did when somebody tampered with Tylenol in the 80s. You know, Johnson & Johnson didn't put the poison in the Tylenol, but they took every bottle off of every shelf in every retail location, and they kept it out until they could figure out tamper-proof packaging. We owe Johnson & Johnson for tamper-proof packaging. Now, for Facebook, it's a similar situation. They didn't do this stuff, but it was their platform, and these are their users. And I think the, the thing they're facing right now is they appear legitimately to have been callously indifferent to the privacy, security, and frankly, the long-term interests of their users. And they need to change that like yesterday, not by talking, but by doing stuff. The, the biggest area of growth and success for Facebook over the last year or two has been Instagram. Right. Is, is that affected by this as well? Or can, oh, yes. do, do consumers see the two as different? No, do they well, think, oh, I might leave Facebook, yeah. but, but I'm gonna keep on Instagram. Or, I don't know what consumers are gonna do, but if you're worried about privacy and data, Instagram is every bit as big a problem as Facebook is. And if you saw Mueller's indictment, apparently the Russians were using that in the election as well. So if these issues bother you, they should bother you across the entire product family. And I think the fix is really simple in the first analysis. They have to provide all the data to all the investigators. Stop pretending like there's, you know, that they're worried about what foreigners would do. I mean, dictators don't care what we do in this country. They force Facebook to give them all the stuff. Facebook needs to give our guys the stuff too. They also need to make an outreach. They need to go directly in the face of every user who is touched, which is basically every voter in America, and say, we were manipulated because we were manipulated, you were manipulated. Yeah. And this is what we're going to do about it. And this is how to protect our and election. Is Mark, there's now calls for Zuckerberg to resign and step down again, which the decision is up to him. He has control of this company. What do you think should happen from a management point of view? I mean, I just, I believe that these are really good people who have for whatever reason, just lost the plot of what's going on here. And if I could sit down with them, i go, guys, you're better than this. Just step back. You're billionaires. You've, you've succeeded in every way you ever hoped do to succeed. Do they need to bring in a fresh face to do that? Or, you know, put, put a fresh face out to In other words, do the kind of Eric Schmidt thing at Google and... Well, I don't know. I, I mean, Kelly, I think this is a really hard call. I mean, Mark totally controls it. Yeah. I would like to find a way for Mark to succeed. I mean. He made the thing yesterday. It was almost like he was saying, gosh, I'm sorry, but I didn't grow up, right? You know, all of a sudden, we are affecting elections. Like when you're at 2 billion people, mm -hmm. you didn't realize you were going to affect <laughs> elections. You were bragging that 65 or 70 percent of the population is getting their political news from you. Yeah. Roger, just very quickly, you said you're still a shareholder, but you've sold a bunch. You sold a bunch after the share price fall this week, or, or was yeah, that Yeah, I have point? I have somebody who manages this for me. I don't make the decisions myself, but after it got creamed, he actually sold some. Okay. Roger, great to speak to you. Thank you so much. Thank Roger McNamee uh, joining us there. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.